Okay. Do you see the cues? Yeah, I can see. Okay, that worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, first things first. Uh, why did you decide to keep this one here? Which is good, actually, but I'm just trying to figure out what's going on in your head because you did make the right decision holding it, I think. Um, well, I just really was looking at the performance of the market and listened to what you said about how the S&P looks, and I, I agree. Mm -hmm. And so I sold the, the call that would have, will expire this coming Friday and bought two new calls that I'll hold out as long as I want. Uh, they expire on the 29th. Okay, so you did, you did, you have two for the March. Correct. What did you book on the ones you got out of Friday then? Here, let me look at it. You sent me your statement. Right. So look. did you buy any of the spy ones or you just did the cues? I just did the cues. Actually, I don't see the cues one on here, maybe because this is not because that, that we just did that that this is your yeah. statement from january and february this isn't this doesn't have the marsh activity that's why oh it doesn't no i don't see it it's january oh there's one march cisco yeah they're they're, they're alphabet they're not even alphabetically listed i'm not oh sure. there it is 313 you made that's good okay. yeah that was good because you only had one right correct i you know i thought hey don't get greedy just get out of this go on okay all right, so that is good. Next target in this is what then? And where are you going to get out? I'll be honest. I I just watch my gains by percentage and say, you know, this is where I was at the beginning of the morning. This is where I am. Am I okay with it? I'm a little bit worried about politics this week, so I really will listen to you. Okay. All right, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I think you got plenty of time in this left because you have it out till the end of the month. Um, but I love the way this gap looked on Friday, obviously, and I love the fact that this is moving ahead of the spy and even the Dow. So if you were going to hold any one of the ones, this looks good. Um, right. All right, so then that one's good. But the next target really is 175, which you could take some out. I don't know what you'll be up in them, but you can watch it. And who knows? I mean, we could be there even tomorrow morning. You, know, you just never know. I mean, look at how we were up Friday night. I don't know what the, what the futures are going to do tonight. All right, let's look at the next one here. Uh, did you? Oh, Netflix, you got out of then three six, or was that yeah. the previous Netflix? Which Netflix was that? The old one or the current one I just called? Um, that's a previous Netflix. Um, that looks I'm, like the biggest I'm, one you did so far of the profits, right? Uh, my biggest profit, actually, no, my biggest profits ever were not in Netflix. They were in Wynn Resorts and the um, Amazon trade that I closed on Friday. Oh, my, yeah, I see here yeah. now. Two wins and then the Amazon, the couple of the Amazons. Correct. I see this here. Um, okay, so Netflix, are you still in this or is this was this with the previous one? You made 1800 something in this one. I am, I'm still in Netflix right now. I still have a call. It's a couple maybe. Let me look. I'm looking right now. I had to open my account. Sorry. I have uh, I have one call. I bought it for, I paid three eighty. I'm up um, I'm up five hundred and seventeen dollars. Market value is now seven seventy two. That's so, crazy. Oh. That's so great. No, that's and you only risked three hundred bucks, and you could be risking so much more than that. Well, I will now, you know, I mean, you and I both know, <laughs> no, we both know I've taken a, a big break from trading and I'm back and I just wanted to, you know, kind of ease in and I took a few hits, you know, in the middle of the, well, in February. Yeah, let's uh, talk about those. So, I mean, I looked at the statement here, you, I mean, you just didn't manage these trades well at all. I mean, I think that, I mean, this, like the, 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 um. Which one was it here? Why well, I, I completely, you know, this isn't me. My whole Amazon trade uh, in January, I was out $1,500. That's when I was sick. That's when I had pneumonia. I know. And that, I think that same one, I don't know if it was one or two, you had made 577. Yeah, 29. Let me look at that one. So this one you got out of Friday. 
So anyways, what did you learn from that period, though, when you mismanaged some of these early in the year? Did you learn to get out quicker? Did you learn to hold longer? Did you learn just you better check where the stock's at if you're not sitting in front of your computer more? Like, what did you learn from that? Because some of these ones here you took losses on, you were up. What did you learn from that? I learned that, number one, a rule I've even heard you say you have, not I shouldn't trade when I don't feel well. Yeah. But it was earnings season, and I wanted to be in, so I gave it a shot. But I, you know, I just wasn't on my game. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that was that was totally what happened. It was it wasn't all of these trades could have been profitable. Yeah. yeah. And I just simply must have been asleep, honestly. Okay, so um, this you got out of on Friday. I'm seeing here you made a thousand bucks. That was good. Um, mm -hmm. Is that, do you have any more of this left, or that one that one you're out of? I'm still in Netflix. Like I said, I have one call. I have two queues that I'm still holding that don't expire, like I said, till the end of the month. That's all I have right now. I'll go back in on other trades this week. One thing I'm noticing here, looking at your just your history of just how you're doing things here, like you you are you're you're really doing like one, 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 like it's really rare that, like, you did 10 of the Cisco's. I, I don't know why, just maybe the cost, but you're really doing, well, you did two Googles here. Like, you're really just just buying one, really, usually. I mean, you're usually just doing one contract, one That's win, no one apple, one. I mean, you're just doing, like, really just the minimum lots, really. Right. I like multiples better. Um and that's what I'll start doing when you send out trades. I'll choose what I, you know, what to take mm -hmm. and so, um, go from there. I'll take more this week. So what I'll, are you doing about the Netflix here? Where are you getting out of that? I'm just going to watch the market on um, Monday morning. And I don't really, I'll be honest, I don't have a targeted area. I just do what I said to you. You know, I'm just watching this one. I'm just kind of amazed. It would have to drop like a knife for me to not get out of the profit. And <laughs> I, was like, I don't think that's going to happen. So I, I'm sort of comfortable with this profit so far, you know? I think one of the reasons also that um, you're doing well with these trades is because 98% of them are longs. And for whatever reason, you still have not overcome this short, short, short bias to things you just don't see it you see the longs when i call longs and charts but you just don't you don't you can't wrap your head around the shorts for conviction and i don't know why that's something you really have to work on because you do miss short opportunities and with the day trading but i mean i think you do well with these because you can see you can see the, the you can wrap your head around the conviction of going long something or even holding something like the cues or netflix but you really struggle with that to the downside and i just don't know why well, honestly, I bought, I actually forgot about this trade. I'm still holding. You'll roll your eyes, I know. I can already feel it. Um, I bought the Expedia uh, puts, and I only bought one put. I paid 413 for it. And initially, I was, again, at a profit. It went down. You know, this was yeah. the earnings were way off, and it dropped. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what I was doing that day, but I wasn't watching my account. So now I'm just kind of sitting here waiting for a blip this week for a second where I can maybe retrieve a little bit of my money. Yeah, I mean, are you, you know, like if something's down 50%, are you going to kill it or are you just writing them all out? I don't think you are, which is fine because I, I which is fine actually because you're getting them then when they move up. But like something like this, like would you have killed this if you had caught it right when you were down 50% or you just would have stayed with it? I mean, actually, I thought this looked pretty good around here, too. And then this this just you know, doesn't look good this, here. In hmm. this trade, um, I'd have to go in and look and see exactly the date that I took this trade. But you know, the Amazon trade that I actually lost the 1500 on and this trade that I'm down, those were both times in the market where we had that strange whip, kind of whipsawed on us, you know? Right. And um, it just went sideways at the worst possible moment. It was yeah. literally, do you remember when Amazon dropped that time? Yeah. This was that trade. That was in that zone, I believe. 
And um, well, that's what everything else did. My yeah, I mean the whole market went wacko, you know. So it was like everybody got caught, you know. What are you gonna do? I think overall, I'm doing okay for this year, just coming back. And as far as your question about my 50% rule, okay, um, you know I'm pretty comfortable with the market, so I kind of think of it as what is my what's the stock. I've had trades. My win trade was down over 50%. And I don't know, pulled itself back together. Stock <laughs> went back positive, And then Steve Wynn got caught and the stock went back down. But now it's back up. You see what I mean? But you did get out at the right time then when it had the rally, which which was good. Here, let me pull that up. That was back. I said, you and I yeah. were on the I was on the phone with you that yeah. day at lunch. And I was like, oh, yeah. well, again. Yeah. Um, that was way back. That was back in January. Mm hmm. Right. Um, you know, and that turnarounds like that, if people get really upset about losing, you know, every once in a while, I don't recommend my method. But overall, it works for me. I think one of the reasons it works for you is because, and I said this in the room the other day, you could be risking way more than you are. You are taking a risk that you're so comfortable with that you're allowing the trades to play out and you're giving yourself time to sit down and think about it and look at it and whatever. And you're not making split tech second decisions to get out of them, whether you're up or down. And it's because your risk is so comfortable for the size of your account and your overall financial picture. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, you were taking just like one of some of these, which it's I, mean, crazy. I mean, obviously you could be risking way, way more, but I think it's good for you to ease yourself into it. But I definitely think also the reason you're doing well is because you have an easier time looking at bullish gaps than you do at bearish gaps. I'm getting better with the, the bearish gaps. Um, and you're a hundred percent right about the size of my trades is, is causing me to be so lax with my exit strategy. You're a hundred percent right. And I know, and that's why this week, my goal was to step up my mm -hmm. size of trades. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you though for the instruction. I, I, I need to do that. I wouldn't have to stay as long anyway, if I would just spend more money. Or you can get out of, if you do two or whatever, you get out of half then into the first move up. And then you can hold the rest out into a little bit. Or you just get out of the whole first thing, whatever whatever you want to do. You know, I mean, it's up to you. But I think you'd have more flexibility if you take more. But I don't even think it matters. I think you're making money, and I think that's very positive. And I know you've been watching, watching, watching for so long. So I'm really happy to see you finally doing it. I, I was thinking about this the other day. I was laughing to myself. I was going to tell you this on the phone. I swear you're going to be in my book as the person that did the class and watched for years before you even took a trade. <laughs> you, you've been a member of the training room, the options letter. You haven't placed a train to the class like five years ago. And you're like, I think I'll just watch for five years, even though I have all this money and I won't do anything. And I'll just watch until I have a hundred percent conviction that she really knows what she's doing. <laughs> It's no, like it wasn't that at all. It was, it was trying to pay attention and like I needed to in those first years I knew you. I just didn't, I just didn't have my, um, how can I say, I just couldn't give it my all, you know, and yeah. now I can more. Yeah. So um, yeah. I'm excited about that, really. No, I think you're doing really, really well and I think that, um, yeah, I think you're doing great. So all in all, do you have any questions for me? I mean, I think you're doing great here. I think you learned from the time you were sick. I think that your idea of risking a little bit more is good. And it's not going hog wild. It's just taking like one extra contract or something. And I think you're getting better about figuring out when you're not home where you can check your phone or see something or whatever that, you know, you can look at these sometimes during the day if something happens. You're watching the market. You're listening to what I'm saying. I mean, I don't know if you have any questions for me, but I think you're doing good. I, I've been in the room every day, so okay. as far as questions right now, um, no, I think it'll be an interesting open tomorrow, um, but... Do you get I futures data? I don't get futures data. Uh, do you? I do. I do have access to some. I'll forward <laughs> to you. Okay? Yeah, I'm just wondering. Uh, I'm just wondering if we're, if we're flat or... 
I mean, I think we're higher for flat. We're higher for if, if we're up. We're higher if we're if we're down. We're higher. I mean, the only way I don't think we're higher is if for some reason we're down a lot, and I don't see that happening. I I don't really think we'll get the reaction that we should from everything that's going on politically. But mm -hmm. what's new? I mean, that's fine with me. I'd rather just have a market without all that. That's really well. I'll send you what I have. Okay. Um, yeah. And thank you, and thank you for everything. I, I appreciate your knowledge and the time and the, everything, your friendship. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jen. It was good talking to you. Have a nice day. Thanks.